In this video, we're going to learn how to determine empirical and molecular formulas. So first off, we need to define what an empirical formula is. It's a formula that tells you the ratio of elements in a compound, but doesn't necessarily tell you exactly how many of each atom there is. Uh, it also doesn't tell you anything about the spatial arrangement um, or the structure of the compound. Um, and so for example, uh, we can actually consider uh, something called formaldehyde, which is used to preserve, um, in this case, an octopus. <laughs> um, its empirical formula is CH2O, and that is actually the same as the empirical formula of vinegar. Um, it's also the same as sugar. So CH2O is the empirical formula of all three of these, and yet they are very different substances. Um, I will point out that CH2O might make you think carbohydrate. Carbon and hydrate makes you think of water. Yes, all three of these are actually carbohydrates. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the true formula of sugar that we eat, table sugar, is C11H22O11. Uh, for vinegar, it's C2H4O2. And for formaldehyde, the empirical formula is actually the same as the molecular formula because when you take the molecular formula um, and you try to find um, something common to divide by, you can't really reduce C1H2O1 any further. You can reduce C2H4O2 by dividing everything by 2. Same with C11H22O11. So the empirical formulas are above, um, and the molecular formulas are below. All right, so how do we determine the uh, empirical formula of something? Uh, let's say that we uh, had a sample of an unknown compound and we put it into a machine to analyze what are the elements in it. In this case, we would end up knowing what there is there, but again, not really the structure of the molecule, not how many of each atom are in each molecule. Um, and that's how we get to an empirical formula. Um, so how could we do that here? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take these percentages and we're going to say per cent, per means divided by, cent means 100. So really, this 40% carbon means that there are 40.0 grams of carbon, oops, carbon per 100 uh, grams of the compound. And um, don't worry about my sig figs on the 100 grams. Let's say it's a perfect 100.000, etc. Um, so if we make that assumption, then we can say that we have 40.0 grams of carbon. We have 6.7 grams of hydrogen. And we have 53.3 grams of oxygen. And these are masses, but remember, an oxygen atom weighs differently from a carbon atom, which weighs differently from a hydrogen atom. So what we need to do is we need to convert all of these to moles. And when we do that, it's the moles that will tell us the ratio of numbers of atoms in the compound. So we have one mole over 12.00 grams we have times one mole over 1.01 .01 grams, and we have times one mole over 16.00 uh, grams. And what we get is we get 3.33, we get 6.67, and we get 3.33. These are all moles. Um, moles of O, moles of H, and moles of C. 
And just looking at these, um, <clears throat> it, it starts to become clear what the uh, empirical formula should be. You can see a ratio here. 3.33 to 3.33 is just one to one. For every oxygen, we have one carbon. But for every carbon or oxygen, we have two hydrogens. Not every time the ratios will look this clean. So the way that we can do this always is we can take everything and divide by whatever there's the least of. So there's the least of, well, carbon and oxygen is the same. So we have 3.33 divided by itself. We have 6.67 divided by 3.33 and we have 3.33 over 3.33, which equals approximately one, approximately two, and approximately one. Note that I'm not worried about sig figs here because we're talking about numbers of atoms. There can be one atom, there can be two atoms, there can be three, there will never be 1.29 atoms in a compound, so we don't need to worry your numbers may be slightly off of whole numbers. You know, you might get 1.023, whatever. Round it to one. Um, so based on these calculations, we can conclude that the formula is gonna be CH2O. Hey, it's a carbohydrate. Um, C1H2O1. So that is one way to determine empirical formula. But what if you were given um, grams um, of carbon, grams of hydrogen, and grams of nitrogen? These don't add up to 100, and that's totally fine. Um, I suppose if you really wanted to, you could find the total mass and convert these gram amounts to percents and then do what we just did. But let's make it easier. In this case, we're just going to say we have 12, 0.3 grams of carbon times one mole over 12 point, whoops, 12.00 grams of carbon. And we have 1.45 grams of hydrogen times one mole over 1.01 grams of hydrogen. And we have 2.87 grams of nitrogen times one mole over 14.01 uh, grams of nitrogen. All right, so what do we get for uh, our values? We have 1.025 moles of carbon. We have 1.44 moles of hydrogen and we have uh, 0 0.205 moles of nitrogen. I am being very cavalier about my sig figs. I guess I included four with a carbon and three with a hydrogen and three with a nitrogen. Remember, our final answers, you don't need to worry about sig figs. I just did this according to my best judgment. Um, the more pure, the more precise your calculations are, the more likely you are to get numbers that work out well, um, <clears throat> that, that are clear, um, and I'll show you. So in this case, we're gonna divide everything by the amount of N, which is 0 0.205 moles over 0 0.205 moles. Of course, this gives us one. Uh, we have 1.44, moles of H divided by 0 0.205, that's going to give us pretty close to seven moles of hydrogen. And for our carbon, we have 1.025 moles of carbon that we're also dividing by 0 0.205, and that gives us five moles of carbon. So we have C5H7N as our, um, as our empirical formula. So how about molecular formula? Well, let's take exactly the same problem. 
So we have the same you know, amount of carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. So we know that the empirical formula is, uh, sorry, that is C, uh, what did I say, C5, H7, uh, N. But we know that the molecular formula of the compound has a molar mass of 162.23 grams per mole. Well, let's add everything up. Let's find the molar mass of our um, uh, empirical formula. So we have 5 times 12, um, 0 0.00, plus uh, 7 times 1.01, plus one times 14.01. This is just five atoms of carbon times the molar mass of carbon, seven atoms of hydrogen times the molar mass of hydrogen. You get it by now. So we have essentially 60 plus seven plus 14, right? So this is gonna be two, zero. Um, so 60 plus 14 is 74 plus seven is 81. So we have 81.02, and that is the molar mass of the empirical formula. Now, when we look at the molecular formula, this is 162.23 grams per mole, and we can divide the molar mass of the molecular formula by the molar mass uh, of the empirical formula. And what we find is it's not perfect, but it's pretty close to two which means <clears throat> that the actual molecular formula is twice as big as the empirical formula. So really we have a molecular formula of C10H14N2. That is our molecular formula because there's twice as much of everything um, as in the empirical formula based on this ratio of molar masses. Hope this has helped. Uh, let me know if you have any comments in the comments section, any questions. Thank you.